Hey everybody, Nate Green here. Today I'm going to be reviewing Nier Automata Automata. Just a quick warning, this video will contain some very minor, minor spoilers. If you're even remotely interested in this game, go into it completely blind. Don't watch any gameplay, don't do anything of the sort. Just get it, first off. I'll sum up this whole review right now. Go buy it. Borrow it from a friend. Turn off my video now, I don't give a shit. Uh, just go play. And so, let's get started. Nier Automata didn't change my life. I didn't have a revelation about the nature of my existence or ask profound questions about AI or the difference between free will and programming, but what it did do was make me question video games. It made me question why video games have been following the same structure that we see every day in books, movies, TV, everything. Everything fits neatly into their genres with stories that have every possible nuance spelled out for you and a happy ending for our protagonists, naturally with some room for a sequel. Nier Automata doesn't give you any of that. In about 30 to 35 hours, you'll beat the game a minimum of five times and see five different endings. But in that time, you'll also most likely finish the game unintentionally a few times and see as many other endings. I mean, there's 26 of them. Sure, only endings like A through E are canon, but the remaining 21 are there for you to stumble upon if you're lucky enough to. Not if you're lucky enough to. You're gonna stumble on them. It happens anytime you step out of line in the plot. But also in that time, you'll play bullet hell shooters. Top down, side scrolling, and every odd angle in between. And I really mean every odd angle in between. Side scrolling platformer sections, a stellar hacking mini game that ranges from bullet hell shooter to maze navigation. Finally, you'll play one of the most competent action games I've ever had the pleasure of playing. The developer, Platinum Games, who you might know from tiny indie projects such as Metal Gear Rising and Bayonetta, they're really in top form here, to the point where all I can do is really sing the praises of the combat mechanics. It's fast, it's fluid, I mean, it's Platinum Games. You know what you're getting, and it's it's perfect. But in addition, you'll do side quests and collect stuff. Oh, the stuff you'll collect, weapons, the stories behind those weapons, fish, enemy data, short stories, diorama-like cinematics, and scraps of information about the world, and just what the absolute hell has been going on in the last 10,000 years, just to name a few. Now, I tried writing this review a few times, but unlike Automata, I had a hard time figuring out where everything fit, because this game is massive, much larger than you'll notice on even your third or fourth playthrough. I'm something like 80 hours in, and I'm still finding new areas that I had never explored before. My issue in writing this, though, was that I was being too mechanical about it, a problem even the machines in Nier don't have. So I decided that I'm going to tell you how I honestly feel about this fantastic game instead of all the typical droning on about game mechanics and the pros and cons because more than anything Nier Automata is a game about emotions and so that's how I'm gonna review it. If you've stuck around until now it's because I've assumed that you've at least played the game a little bit or just you know don't give a shit maybe you're a fan of Yoko Taro's other work so you'll know what I mean when I say that Yoko Taro the director of this game, uh, he's really outdone himself this time. It's no secret that I'm a huge fan of his work. Nier is one of the, my favorite games of all time, and I loved, I loved Drakengard 3. But Automata is better than both of those. Starting first with the perspective shifts. Going from 2B to 9S was an unexpected jump, and it not only changed how the plot was presented, but it also switched up how the game was played, which was something that they really didn't need to do. It would have been all too easy to just make 9S a gameplay clone of 2B, but they didn't. Instead, 9S is underwhelming, let's say, in combat, especially after you play 2B for so long. But then you start hacking, and in that, you turn any enemy on the battlefield either into a potential ally, or a bomb, or something to remote control. 9S's combat style isn't to directly attack the enemy, but to turn their numbers against them. And until I figured that out, I honestly hated playing as him. I thought he was slow, and kind of boring, considering he's really limited in combat. He can only equip just one weapon, he only has light attack, and it sucks. Except for the hacking thing, which is straight up, like, overpowered. But then we get flipped around again to play as a third character, and she is what amounts to a clone of 2B, not literally chill out light spoilers guys come on but she doesn't affect the gameplay in the same way as 9s good god does she change your perspective on the narrative experiencing all these perspective shifts really grounds you in who these characters are by the end nothing that they do is a mystery there's no foggy motivations behind why 9s is acting irrationally or behind 2b's bloodlust even supporting characters benefit from dealing with such a wide range of personalities through their multiple interactions, they become nearly as fleshed out as our main trio, the 
despite their very, very limited screen time. And that's where I think Automata is so brilliant. As concerned as it is in telling you its story, it's just as interested in telling it to you through the gameplay. Camera angles are changed often, being utilized to change not only the genre of the game that you're playing, but to also imitate the experience of being in a heated and confusing battle. The best example that I found was being inflicted with a virus. It's not only going to affect your movement and your attacks, but the picture and the sound of the whole game. Music and character voices sputter intermittently, and on-screen text becomes jumbled even in the pause menus. Even graphical issues like screen tearing and low resolution and color distortion become problems as a result of the virus. These issues are not present in regular gameplay, at least on the PS4. I've heard the PC has had some issues, but these problems are a direct result of being inflicted with the virus. And it's because as far as the game is concerned, you're not just playing a video game, you're actually seeing through the eyes of an android in the middle of a war. Much of the important parts of the plot even take place quote-unquote outside the game. Clandestine conversations happen through text on loading screens, for instance, since the loading screens themselves are the boot sequence of the androids. No part of the game is off-limits for storytelling since the whole thing, the UI, the menus, all of it, it is all part of the story, right down to in what is legitimately, no exaggeration here, one of my favorite moments in gaming as a whole, the credits themselves actually being integrated into the story. I'm not going to say anything more than that, but it's something that really has to be experienced to truly appreciate it. You can watch it on like a Let's Play or something, but it's not going to be the same if you're not playing it. Now, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and review a Yoko Taro game and not mention the soundtrack because it's yet another way that Automata outshines its predecessors. Because in a word, I mean it's fucking fantastic. It's it's great. As good as Nier's was, Automata's actually tops it. Because as it was obviously designed to do, it gives you a perfect sense of what's going on around you. Like a sense of wonder, or dread, or happiness, or desperation. And especially for us fans of Nier, nostalgia is a big one. In some cases, it's also integrated into the story like everything else is. In one standout sequence against what can only be described as a cabal of insane cultist machines, their chant of desire to transcend to the next plane of existence and become gods is actually literally inserted into the song. It immediately became one of my favorites of the entire soundtrack. And then there's the song that plays during the credits that actually changes to convey the sacrifices made during the game. And it, it all hinges on a single choice that you make. You'll know it when you get there. And it's fucking great. It's really, really powerful stuff. Now to say that I loved Nier Automata is an understatement because the story is powerful, it's terrible, it's hopeful, and using gameplay to convey the plot, the way that it does, I think is a stroke of brilliance. And that's not even counting the music, which is incredible. The game itself is just action game perfection. It's it's perfect. I mean, it's platinum games. It's perfect. And they also have a nice helping of RPG elements thrown in for good measure. I, I really don't think that we'll see a game like this again anytime soon. Honestly, if anything will give us the chance to revisit this world, it's the people who've played it spreading the word. The fact that this was even made, I consider a minor miracle. Considering how poorly the first Nier was was not only received, but also sold. Like, it genuinely shocked me when this game was announced. This is me doing my part in the word of mouth campaign that I'm advocating so hard. Do yourself a favor and go play it, because you won't regret it. All right, so that was my review of Near Automata. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to, you could always subscribe to my channel, like this video, and you could even follow me on Twitter, if you're so inclined, at Nate Green Games. So thanks for watching, everyone.